Good morning. Did you enjoy that? I'm glad that uh, glad for the songs that they sung this morning, focused on worship and honoring the Lord. Uh, from the very first song that Megan sung about the 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 lamb, the lion. All the way the last one was exactly what I needed. Amen. Sometimes you can't worry about what everybody's doing behind you or in front of you. You've got to shut your eyes, get along with God and worship. Because if, if you look and see what everybody else is doing, you'll base what you do on that. Amen. How many of you enjoyed Sunday school last two Sundays? Last, last, that old saying, last month of Sundays. It's been good, ain't it? Amen. Turn to Proverbs chapter number 3. I won't keep you very long this morning. We're uh, going to try to stay with this chapter till we get to the end of it. We may get through a couple verses today. You can stay seated this morning. Just st- stay right there and just relax. How many of you were here last Sunday? Don't raise your hand. Uh, a lot of the, even the Sunday school lesson and the preaching message was on favor. Walking in favor of God and walking in His blessings. And when you get in the favor of God and God begins to favor you and bless you and begins to increase you, Doug, and give you more and more and more, there is a responsibility that comes along with that. We already said this morning where much is given. Much is required. How many of you feel like you've been given much this morning? Anybody ever been a pet somewhere? I never was a teacher's pet. I was the teacher's thorn in the side. But I have been a pet to some people. Amen. And that's having favor. Verse number 9, I want you to listen to what the Bible says. Honor. Say honor. Honor. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Now listen to this. So shall, shall's a big word, right? That means it'll happen. Thy barns be filled with plenty, and thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Brown, you pray before we go any farther. Help us, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I start to say you can be seated, but you're already seated. I want you to listen to this word honor. How many of you know what honor means? You think of honor, you, you, you think of respect. Listen to what it means. To honor means high respect, to have great esteem or love, to regard with respect. And the word honor can mean to keep an agreement. The Bible says here to honor. The Lord, and I begin to think, Brown, about some things the Bible said to honor. I want you to listen to this right here. Number one, the Bible says to honor marriage. How many of you are married here this morning? Some of you are not married this morning. Some of you have been married and it didn't work. Amen. But the Bible says that marriage is this right here. Marriage is honorable in all, in a bed undefiled but whoremongers and adulterers. God will judge marriage is to be honored this morning. If you're married, you've got to honor it. You've got to reverence. You've got to love. You've got to appreciate your marriage. You've got to treat it with admiration, Doug, or to go away. Amen. If you don't love and honor your marriage and your spouse, whoever it is, it'll fail. Amen. Uh, That's why marriages uh, are failing every day. Over 50% in the church. Uh, Denise, not in the world, but in the church are failing today. We've got marriages right now in this church that are failing. Uh, You may look good sitting in church this morning. You may put on a good smile, but Tanner, when a lot of people get in the car, it's on. Amen. And and that's uh, that's the home is a battlefield. And if your home's a battlefield and you're not honoring your marriage, your kids are growing up in a battlefield. 
Amen. I look over the church and we got more young couples. We got a lot of young couples right now in the church that will be married in probably the next three, four, five years. Amen. We got kids in the church, young people, 19, 20, 22, 23 year old that'll be married. The only way your marriage will work is if you honor it. You've got to honor the marriage. You've got to honor the commitment. You've got to honor your spouse. That means you love them and you hold them to a high esteem. Amen. If you do not do that, it will fail. Honor. Honor is a big word. It's something that, that we don't even really think about, Brown. We don't think about honoring anything because we just go on our way. There's no respect. There's no regard. Nothing's held in high esteem anymore. Because everything seems to be replaceable. Amen. Are we all right this morning? I'm glad James taught on uh, taking it and not getting offended this morning. That's all right, but a marriage is to be honorable. What else do you think? What else do you think about when you think about honor in the Bible? Children obey who? Say it loud. How many of you got parents still alive? If you got a parent that's still alive, it's your duty to honor them. That's hold them in high regard, with high respect, with love and admiration. Listen to this. In, in Deuteronomy, in Exodus 20, 12, it says, Honor your parents. Deuteronomy 5, 16, Honor your parents. Micah, Micah 7 and 6, Honor your parents. Matthew 15, 4, Honor your parents. Matthew 19, 19, Honor your parents. Mark 7 and 10, Honor your parents. Mark 10, 19, Honor your parents. And listen to this. In Ephesians 6 and 2, it said, Doug, honor your parents, for this is the first commandment with what? With promise that your days may be prolonged and it be good for your health. Amen. It comes with a promise. Amen. To honor your parents is a big deal. Jim, I, I wish I could go back so bad back to whenever I was a teenager or young adult and I could honor my parents. I, Doug, I never talked back. I don't remember ever having but one argument, Kevin, with my mom. I called her name one time that I can remember in my entire life. We argued one time. Why? Because I honored her, I loved her, respected her, and I knew, I knew that Miss Reba, when the rubber met the road, I was guilty and nobody else would stand in my place and have my back. She was 100% as guilty as I was. She was pleading my case, honey. She was my Jesus before I got saved. Amen. She was, she was like nationwide. She was on my side. Amen. No matter what i done, she was there. I honored her and I loved her. And Doug, I didn't want to hurt her in any way. But see, me and Dad, I, don't remember, I didn't have the option to not honor Him. I didn't have the option, uh, Doug, to talk back or argue or there wasn't really no discussion. I don't ever remember us ever arguing or, or anything like that. But I didn't honor Him in the way that, see, I carry His name. If you look at my name, uh, Miss Reba, it's Eric Prophet, and my name come from him. And see how I dishonored him and how I hurt him, Julie, was I took his name out into the world. And whenever I started doing the things I'd done, people said, ain't that old Prophet's son? Ain't he a deacon at Prophet's Grove? Ain't this and ain't that? And Doug, I drug his name through the mud. It didn't affect his love for me. But I still I heard his name. I did not honor that name. If you're here this morning and you're uh, Grace and Lily are carrying my name when they go out in the world and they decide to do whatever they're going to do, amen, they're taking my name and Kelly's name. That's with you. One of these days it'll change, but till it does, it's mine. Amen. And it's my dad's and it's his dad's. And Jim, we've got to honor that. And we've got to carry it like it's something precious. And we've got to hold it in high regard. Uh, Brown, if I could go back and do it again, I'd protect it. A good name is more precious than gold and silver. Amen. It's precious. Kevin, but we can't go back. But, thank God we can start today. We can honor that name. You can honor, Doug, if they're not alive. The name Jones is a big name. Uh, Joe, it's a big name. Doug's give you a big name. It's been passed down. It's yours to honor and to do what you want to with it. It's a big deal. The name Brown is a big name. It's yours. And the two little girls are carrying it around. It's a big deal. It's to be honored. Amen.
But not only that, I don't think I'll get past this today right here because I'm fixing to have me a good time. But see, Harley, there's more to honor than the things that we've got here that we can touch and feel and have a hold of. I want to read you a verse or two right here. How many of you ready to go to church this morning? How many of you is tired when you got here? Didn't really, didn't really feel like being here. Raise your hand and be honest. Quite a few of you. Listen here, this ought to wake you up. 1 Timothy 1.17 Now, say now. now. Now unto the King eternal. Hallelujah. I'm glad He's eternal. Immortal. He ain't ever going to die. And invisible. Do you see God anywhere? Doug, do you see Him? I don't see Him anywhere. But is He here? Absolutely, He's here. I don't look at myself in the mirror. I don't see God in the morning. But when I get up, I feel God inside of me. I see Him in my life. I see Him in the changes. I see Him in my mind, in my mouth. And Jim, I know that He's there. He's immortal and He's invisible. If He was here and you could see Him, you'd act different. you put your cell phones up. you quit playing with songbooks. You'd quit looking at your neighbor. You'd quit distracting yourself with something beside of and you'd pay full-fledged attention. Honey, he's here, I promise. Amen. 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 Listen, and he's the only, only, say only. He's the only wise God to honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Now I want to read you a few more verses in Revelation. And I think I'm going to the house. Listen to this. This is in Revelation chapter number 4. And when those beasts, this is in heaven. How many of you want to go to heaven one day? How many of you believe in heaven? Well, hardly we don't hear much preaching on heaven. But the Bible said that eyes not seen, ears not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those that loved Him. Doug, heaven is untalked about because it's not understood. But it's not some boring place that people are floating around and just this humming a song. Uh, heaven is a place of beautiful worship, but it's also a place, Doug, of freedom. It's a place of life. It's a place of, of full-fledged life. That's all you want this morning if you're here and you're looking for something good. You're looking to live. Am I right? Do you know why you want more money? How many of you want more money? Be honest. Raise your hand. How many of you want more money? Raise your hand. You, boy, some of you are lying. Do <laughs> you know why you want more money? Uh, Kay, do you know why you want it? Because you think it'll make you live better. Am I right? If I had more money, I could do this, this, and this, and I'd live better, and I'd feel better, and I might even look better because I felt, huh? -uh. Heaven is a place of life and freedom. Jim, it's just flowing with life. Uh, the Bible said that the tree of life is on both sides of the river. Yeah. It's a place, a, a brown of pure freedom, spiritually and physically. <clears throat> Hallelujah. I wish I could tell you more about it. Listen to this. Verse number 9, And when those beasts, this is in Revelation chapter number 4, mark it in your Bible. And when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks unto Him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever. Now I want you to listen to this. The four and twenty elders representing the church fall down before Him that sat on the throne and worship Him that lived forever and ever. And they cast their crowns. It's a picture of royalty. Doug, would you like to have a crown and be a king? Would you like to be royal? Uh, that'd be all right, wouldn't it? But they take their crowns, Doug, and they cast them. They say, I don't want this because I don't deserve this. It's all yours. But they're still royalty because of him that sits on the throne. It's all about him. Now listen. How many of you are all right? How many of you are lost? Wondering what in the world this preacher is talking about. Listen, the four, the four and twenty elders fall down before Him that sit on the throne and worship Him that liveth forever and ever, and they cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou worthy, how many of you believe He's worthy? Raise your hand, keep it up. Thou worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for Thou hast created all things. And for Thy pleasure they are and were created. How many of you believe God's the creator of all things? Now listen to this, chapter 5, verse number 11. 
And I beheld and heard the voice. This is John seeing all this, trying to take it in and write it down. No way a fleshly man could do it. And I beheld and heard the voice of many angels round about the throne. Now we got the beasts. We got the four and twenty elders, Harley. Now we got it. the angels around the throne. Listen. Round about the throne and the beast and the elders, and the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand. That's a pretty good size crowd, Cinda. That's a lot of people, a lot of angels, and the beasts around the throne, and listen, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb. Remember the word Lamb. Say Lamb. lamb. Which was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. Listen to this. And every creature which is in heaven... Everything that's ever been created in heaven, everything that can move and breathe, and guess what it's doing? It's before the throne, worshiping Him this morning. Every creature in heaven and earth and under earth and in the sea and such as are in the sea and all that are in them heard I say in blessing and honor. So everything in heaven... Everything on earth that God made, every animal, every plant, every bit of air, everything that's here, the water, the sea, the rivers, everything here, the trees, the grass, it's all saying blessing and honor. This morning, it's all crying out to Him. I want to tell you something right now, just a minute. This ought to help you. And listen, and glory and power be unto Him that setteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb, say Lamb, Lamb. forever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders fell down and worshipped Him that liveth forever and ever. Okay. Everything the angels are saying, Amen, glory and honor forever. The four beasts are saying, Amen, glory and honor forever. The earth is saying, Amen, glory and honor forever. The sea is saying, Amen, glory and honor forever. Everything in the center of the earth, the through the earth is saying, Amen, glory and honor forever. But the four and twenty elders that represents the church, Matt, represents us in heaven today. They're bowing down before the throne, looking up, Amen, and praising God. What's the difference, Amen, between... Us and all of creation. What's the difference between Jason Brown and Gabriel in heaven who's worshiping God? What's the difference in the four beasts and Jim Watson this morning? Let me tell you the difference, amen. This ought to stir you up. See, they none have a sin debt. Hallelujah. There's not an angel in heaven that had a sin debt. There's not a thing in the earth, or below earth or above earth, in the sea or in heaven that had a sin debt. But guess what? Jason Brown had a sin debt. That's why the four and twenty elders said glory to the Lamb. Amen. You know who the Lamb is? That's Jesus. You know when He became the Lamb? When He took on the cross of Calvary. Amen. That's when He took on the glory. Hallelujah. That's when He took on my sin. Jim, and He died for me. Amen. He became the Lamb. Hallelujah. It's dry in here. Listen. He became the Lamb for everybody in here. Amen. Doug, and we ought to be down honoring Him this morning. We ought to be crying out glory and honor forever and ever to Him that was and is and is to come. Amen. The first and the last, the beginning of the end and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. We ought to be worshiping Him like who He is. Does God did God get glory here this morning? Do you think God? I think I tell you when God got glory when Corey testified. I could feel the presence of God. And man, it felt good coming up through here. I felt like God was honored in what He'd done in His life because He bragged on Him. Then a few more of you bragged on Him and talked God was honored. And Miss Reba, when we sang praises and, and when the little one up here was singing those songs and when she was sitting on a toilet singing those songs, God was honored and He was glorified. But honey, as a church, as the blood bought forgiven, Listen to me. This morning, everybody in here, from this little one, little Mac that Harley's holding, to the oldest one to, to see it sitting right here. Everybody in this church, you've got a sin debt that you cannot pay. 
Do you hear me this morning? Everybody in here, Seth, has got a sin debt that's stapled to them, amen, till the day they die, unless they come to Jesus Christ, accept what He done on the cross, make Him the Lamb, the slain Lamb, for their life. Jim, we don't hear enough preaching about the Lamb. Hallelujah. But let me tell you what, He's sitting on the right hand throne of God this morning. Doug and they're all worshiping Him. But you know what? They're astonished. They get out of the way. Those four beasts, they're amazed, Brown, when somebody here, I guarantee you, gets down and says, glory and honor to Him that lives forever, that took away my sins because they never had that happen. They were created to worship. The angels were created to worship. They're programmed to do that. They don't have no choice. But you do. Some of you sit, sit here sold up, stand here sold up, whatever it is, and you're so worried about in your life and what ain't right and what's going on and, and you pitiful little selves. Because it ain't perfect. Honey, it ain't going to be perfect. But God is worth worshiping. He's worth glorifying. He's worth honoring. And all these other things that I preached about this morning for just a few minutes from your parents honoring them, from your marriage honoring it. From honoring one another, the Bible said the elders are to be honored. God's men are to be honored with a double honor. All that stuff, if you'll start with honor in Jesus, the rest of it will fall into place. Seth, if I'll honor Him, I won't have no problem honoring my wife. If I'll honor Him, I won't have no problem honoring my mom. You know why I drove my dad's name through the, through the dirt? It wasn't to hurt him. It was because I wasn't honoring God. If my honor begins with Him, it'll fall in line. All right, Lordy, I ain't got through none of this verse. Are we all right this morning? Now listen to me. Let me at least get through this verse and we'll go home. Honor the Lord with thy substance. How many of you got some substance? With the first fruits, or the 10%, tithing, my chisel deck passes that right into the New Testament church, right? 10%. We tithe. Am I right about it? Do you believe that? And Doug, you give your 10%. Honor the Lord with your substance, with the first fruits, with the very first. When you get your paycheck, take 10% straight out. Matt, give it to God. Honor God with it. Uh, don't, don't fret over it. Don't worry about it. it don't, don't miss it. Don't wonder where it's going. Uh, don't have to hear a financial report. Don't worry about what's happening. Give it to God. Say, God, here it is. God loves it. A cheerful giver. Here it is. You have it. Do whatever you want with it. Honor Him with it. And then there is such thing as an offering. That means when you give above that 10%. That's when, like Lita was talking about, helps. That might be money. That might be time. That might be effort of a card. That might be a telephone call. That might be a bag of groceries. That might be just going to visit for just a few minutes. That can be a number of things that you offer. I tell you, the hardest thing to give is time. I'd way rather send a $50 bill or $100 bill to somebody than have to take my time away. Amen. Because once that thing's in the mail, I can go do what I want to. But see, sometimes, Doug... You've got to offer your time and go do it because it goes a lot farther. Amen. Honor the Lord. That's how you honor the Lord. That's what Jesus done. Jesus didn't send His disciples. Most of the time, Jim, He went Himself. Amen. He didn't say, listen, uh, Peter, I want you to go because there's going to be a woman to this well It's 90 miles away. But she'll get saved if you go tell her. And you, there's a woman going to be caught in the act of adultery. I want you to go. You've got to just scribble a few things in the sand. Take care of it. And to be all right, he went himself. He offered his self. Are you all right this morning? That's what he wants us to do is just be willing, Brown, to give, to give out of our substance, to give out of ourself, to give out of our first fruits. And then he said he would bless so much that our barns couldn't hold it and our wine press would overflow. That wine press is not you're going to make you a wine press at home and sell wine. That is the blessings of God. Amen. Denise, that is blessings that only He can give that come through you. Amen. 
I'm done this morning. I, I, I actually intended to get through this whole chapter, but I'm not going to get through honoring. Where favor is given. And I look over this church, David, and I see a lot of people that's walked in the favor of God. That don't mean that trouble don't come. That don't mean that hard times don't come. That don't mean that we don't make mistakes. But God has favored us and blessed us. He said, He has surely favored Cornerstone as a church. If you don't believe that, let's take next Sunday off and go visit everybody in here. Go visit another church and then come back Sunday after. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's do it. Want to? Okay. Why not? Because we found favor. Not because of us, because of Him. But if we keep honoring Him, Honoring Him in song. Honor from the time James or David opens into the first song that's sung. Honor Him by coming early, Doug. Do you know the difference in our services when y'all get to come early? Do you tell the difference? Do you, can you feel the difference in the service when it's open with song and worship? Uh, it's amazing. It's just a simple sacrifice of giving a little bit of time. Some of you that can't make it for Sunday school, Sacrifice. Get up a little early. Amen. Preacher, that's how we do it on Sundays. Do it different. Amen. God will bless you, and He already has, but don't. We're, we're people that's full of blessings so much that we're good. We're good. Don't need no more, right? Not me. You know what? Kevin asked this morning who had a dream for God. And you know what? I was afraid to say two Sundays in a row because I was afraid I'd shortchange God and myself by saying what God would want me to do or what the dream would be for God. Because if we're not careful and we set our own dreams just like you said, we'll set them too low. Not what I can do because I can't do nothing, but what God can do through anybody in here. Jim, if we'll let Him, if we'll honor Him with what we've got, our substance. Are you all right this morning? I'm done. Lord, we love you. Thank you, Lord, for your blessing.